Good evening, it's Blessed Selling Author Ian Joy, and today one of my readers reached out to me and asked if I would read an excerpt from one of my forthcoming titles. So, of course, the readers are the boss of me. So, I am going to read from my next installment of the Diva series titled one Sunday at a time. It releases March 29th, 2016. So hopefully after you hear me read, you'll run out and pre-order it or depending on the date you actually watch this and hear me read, you'll go out and buy the actual book or even go out and buy all of the other, other titles in the series if you haven't been keeping up with the Divas. So again, right now I'm going to read from One Sunday at a Time. You can't leave me, Deborah yelled out at Lennox, spittle flying from her mouth. She looked like a mad woman. She felt like a mad woman. Her hair was in a disarray and perspiration beaded up on her forehead. It was no wonder she didn't have foam caked up in the corners of her mouth. She was acting rabid, like the victim in a science fiction horror movie that had failed to escape the vicious plague that was attacking all of Earth. She needed help. That was no longer the million dollar question. The question now was why hadn't she gotten the help she so desperately needed or rather why hadn't she continued getting the help she'd once been receiving. For a minute there she felt like she'd been doing so well that she didn't really need any help. There had always been the possibility that if she fell back into her slump again she could just pick up where she left off in her treatment. Not only had some of her old traits reared their ugly heads but she was far worse off now than ever before. What had started off as a manageable snowball was now an avalanche and if Lennox didn't get out of the way, <laughs> he'd be buried alive underneath it. I can leave you, I am leaving you, and I'm taking the kids with me, was Lennox's reply to his wife's command. So now, not only was her husband leaving her, but he was taking their two sons with him. The rage that welled up in Deborah's being was uncontrollable. That didn't come as any surprise. She lost jurisdiction over her emotions a long time ago. At first, when her life seemed to start getting hectic, she somewhat managed. She hid the darkness under an invisible flashlight. Outsiders couldn't see the darkness or the object projecting the false lighting. But then emotionally, it felt as if one thing was piling on top of the other. Anger issues, depression, anxiety, the need to be in control, compulsion for order. There were times, after researching the term, that she even thought she might be bipolar. Heck, she maybe she was experiencing a little bit of all of them, which was a recipe for disaster. And with her husband standing in front of her with a suitcase in hand threatening to leave her, <laughs> looked like the recipe had been followed to a T and now the timer on the oven had sounded. <laughs> it was over. Done. Why are you doing this? Deborah cried out. Why are you hurting me? Deborah stood blocking the closed door. <laughs> She'd already told Lennox that he was leaving over her dead body. Those hadn't just been desperate words being flung out of her, out of her mouth. She meant it. I was hurting you when I was pampering and pacifying your actions instead of making you go do something about it, Lennox told her. So now what? Deborah raised her arms and then allowed them to fall to her side. You call this helping me? Lennox shook his head. No, I call this giving you the opportunity to help yourself. Lennox slowly walked toward his wife. It pained him so much to see her like this. He didn't understand how a person's emotions and behavior could shift so erratically. Why was it that he and Deborah could have experienced the best night in the world, but then Deborah would wake up mad at the world? Or how one little thing throwing her off schedule or being out of order could send her on a rampage? Although Deborah loved her job as a literary agent and editor, it was hard for Lennox to tell sometimes. Getting steady, good-paying projects was every freelance editor's dream. But as an agent, sometimes Deborah could get overwhelmed with submissions or needy authors. 
So when all her projects collided and or piled on top of one another, she often operated in fear of not getting what she already had on her plate done before another healthy, healthy portion was served up. When Deborah was working on one project, her mind would already be on the next and the one after that. And God forbid Lennox or the children need her to do something for them, she'd bite their hands off. For Deborah, there were instances when she felt pangs of guilt for feeling as though she put her job before her family. She'd be regretful, which would make her feel less than a good wife and less than a good mother, sending her into a bout of depression. Everything about her life was like a double-edged sword, and now she was cutting up. Lennox had already received one too many wounds. It was time for him to go. But Deborah wasn't going to allow that without putting up a fight. I promise I'll be better, Deborah pleaded, looking into her man's eyes. I I I'll do whatever you want me to do. Deborah bounced up and down like a child begging for her parent to buy her something from the ice cream truck. Lennox rested his hands on Deborah's shoulders. The gesture was to both comfort her and to make her stop bouncing. He could see that his leaving was eating her up. He was afraid. He really didn't know what his wife would do after he walked out of that door. But he was more afraid of what might happen if he didn't. And that was a reading from One Sunday at a Time, the next installment in the Diva series, which releases March 29th, 2016. And if you haven't been keeping up with the Divas, you have plenty of time. You can just visit my website, www.enjoywrites.com, and take a peek at all the other books in the series. That's www.enjoy. W-R-I-T-E-S dot com. Happy reading.